What is up, guys? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. What is up, guys? Heath Lake Champlain Sanitation here, and today we are doing a clean out. Um, some scrap metal and some scrap wood, as you can see behind me, Jacob's working on this here. Um, we're using two separate trucks with two separate trailers. This is another way you can utilize like a dump trailer or a roll off dumpster trailer like I use um, to generate a different source of income for your business that isn't just residential trash pickup or the roll off dumpsters. So a bunch of good stuff in here. We got some plastic, some old can lids, some wood, some pipe, and some old fencing. Alrighty guys, so as you can see down there, a lot of cinder blocks, probably gonna keep those if the customer doesn't want them um, for backup stuff to jack things up, but here we go. You can see behind me, everything is gone from there and is now in here. Now, we do have the separate one for metal. Um, we're gonna start tearing the shed down now. Obviously, all that stuff's gonna go in a separate dumpster because that's gonna go to the scrap yard. All this stuff, because it's all like rotted out wood, some plastic, um, that can go right to the landfill. So, we got the shed behind us. We're about to get some footage of smashing this bad boy. Um, walk over here, give you a little inside view of the metal. Um, Obviously this, this shed is like all tin, so we can bring that to the scrap yard. And uh, yeah, we'll have some fun smashing this thing. So we have all the junk loaded up into this trailer here. We do have a TV. We pay extra for those at the landfill. The reason we put it in the back is so we can take it off and put it in a separate location when we get to the landfill before we actually dump the load of junk, which was mainly um, made up of a little bit of dirt, uh, some wood debris, some rotted out um, like uh, cinder blocks, if you will, like bricks, uh, some random PVC piping and a few other pieces of junk um, that was in there. And I'll bring you over and show you guys the, uh, the metal tin area here. This is where the shed was. And now we'll show you where it is. Like I said, using your roll off trailer for multiple things. Right inside there, good to go to the scrapyard. After we tarp it, of course. Hope you guys like that little uh, little clean out preview. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty cold up here today. I think we're talking high 30s up here today, up in the Northeast corridor here of New York State. Um, so it's getting chilly. I do have one dumpster in the yard. So like I said, starting to slow down. Luckily, still four of them are out there. We've got a couple booked for this week. Um, but yeah, it's maintenance time, crunch time, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video today. For example, um, I'm going to be getting some, well, I just did get new tires put on the F-350. It's not in the yard right now because it's also getting brakes put on it this weekend. I have a friend of mine who will do backyard mechanic, as I like to call it work, such as, you know, brakes and tire changes, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm hooked up with him where it's about half the price of a shop rate and uh, uh, of a dealer shop rate, I should say. Um, and I and he does all that work for me on the weekends. Now, when it comes to greasing, like I've showed you in the videos, greasing, uh, plugging tires, um, obviously just changing out tires with like an impact wrench, little stuff like that. I tend to do all that myself. Um, you can do that in a shop or outside. It's all very easy stuff to do. Um, and that's the kind of things that I do. But when it comes to bigger repairs, such as replacing tires on rims or uh, brakes and that kind of stuff or any larger issues, I do subcontract that stuff out. So how do you find this so-called backyard mechanic or say a shop that isn't gonna charge you what the dealership rate is to just save you a little bit of money? Now, if you wanna go to the dealership, obviously if something's under warranty, 
obviously bring it right there. It's going to be free to you most likely. Um, and you know, the dealership's going to do a great job at that. But in business, as we all know, when you're small and starting out, you want to save some money. So what I did, uh, I started asking around friends, family, you know, who does brake jobs, who does, you know, even something as simple as an oil change. If you really do the math up by the time you buy the filter, the oil, unless you're buying it in bulk and you're doing like five to 10 trucks at a time, guys, you're talking 10 to $20 more to have someone else do it. And then you, you don't need, I mean, I keep the tools on hand, but if you're just starting out, you could budget that $20 in. You don't need the tools, you don't need, you know, the oil uh, filter wrenches, you don't need other things, you don't need the shop, you know, you're not, I mean, in the middle of the winter, doing an oil change outside is not fun. It's been a lot of years since I've done that, but it's not a fun thing to do. So if you can, you know, budget those extra things and have someone do it for you, that's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Now, of course, to subcontract that stuff out, guys, you have to be making money. So that's why, you know, I always recommend as you grow, keep a maintenance account um, to the side just in case you run into like, it's like a rainy day fund. Say if uh, new brakes and rotors or just brake pads even on a used vehicle you buy, you know that's going to be anywhere from $200 to $1,000 depending on how much you have to do and where you got to bring that. Put that aside as fast as you can in your business. When you start making money, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. You know, you're bringing in, let's say, you know, five to 10,000 a month. You're like, awesome. You know, my fixed costs are only 3,500 to 5,000 a month. You know, if you're up in that $10,000 range, I've got an extra 5,000 left over. Well, that's all good and dandy until the truck breaks down. Or if you have multiple trucks until they break down, you want to have that money put aside. Cause even if you can do repairs yourself, you're going to run into parts costs and then you're going to have to run into maybe renting a truck. You might have to borrow a truck and pay somebody for that. So those are always good things to keep to the side just in case, you know, and it's not just in case those things are going to happen, but just in case you don't have the money that month, you already have it set aside for when that stuff happens. So I get asked uh, a lot of the times how much mechanical ability I have or how much mechanical ability do you need in this business? Um, it really depends. Uh, if you, in my opinion, if you can make enough income, revenue, profit, whatever you want to call it, to cover your maintenance costs and you have a good hookup with someone that can do a lot of that stuff for you, the bigger stuff at least that is, I would say subcontract that out, guys, uh, just to save you time and potentially making a larger problem if you don't know what you're doing. So brakes, tires, that's gonna be tire changes. Um, naturally, I keep a couple tires ready to go, but uh, changing tires, changing brakes, oil changes, potential air filters, um, cabin filters, because you're gonna be in and out of the landfill a lot, regardless if you're on the residential side or the dumpster side. Um, are really the big things. You want to keep grease on hand. You should be able to grease your own equipment. A grease gun, a good grease gun. Um, I have a Milwaukee one. Uh, is you know 150 to 300 dollars depending on what kit you go with. Um, are good things to just keep on hand. And how much money should you set aside per year per truck to have in maintenance? Now, if you have a trailer, obviously you want to do that. I personally will set aside anywhere from now. This is on a new truck, 1500 to 2500 dollars for that truck in case of brake job. Brakes are not under warranty in most cases. Tire replacement. Tires can be anywhere from 650 to $1,000 a set, depending on what tires you go with. So you can see how real quick you can eat up that 15 to $2,500 budget, but those other things should be covered under warranty. And if you have a used truck, probably should keep more, a used truck with no warranty, I should say, you should probably keep more on hand um, just in case I don't have anything used that's sold that it's out of warranty except for one of my dump trailers. That's the one that I talked to you about was $3,500, $4,000 all in. If anything happens to that, I can fix that for way less than what is, um, wh what, you know, I own it for. So, you know, I'm not too worried about that. Most things on a dump trailer can be replaced for a few hundred dollars at max. But in the truck situation, if you have a used truck that with no warranty, I would say at least a few thousand dollars is what you're going to want to set aside to be ready in case that truck goes down. So I hope those numbers helped you out, guys. Um, you know, coming into the winter season, 
maintenance is going to be a big thing. You're going to want to, you know, I'm not going to be able to wash the vehicles myself because I don't have a shop. If you have a shop, more power to you. Uh, or if you live in the, the lower states where you don't get any snow, that's awesome. Um, but, you know, without washing the vehicles, I will start having to bring them to a car wash. Try to do that about once a week uh, in the winter. Um, the dump trailers have been fluid filmed, so those are good to go. But, uh, but those are just things that we're going to start running into here. And really excited uh the truck is so close to being done i'm going to do a video on that i've been taking video clips like once a week of the process i got to edit that and get that to you guys on the 5500 hopefully by the end of next week that's going to be the video we we launch um but yeah as always guys thank you so much for watching these videos super pumped we're still growing uh the channel every single day um still a small youtuber so i'm obviously looking at those analytics quite a bit. Uh, if you guys like the videos, um, it'd be awesome if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so we can keep coming back to you every single week and eventually more than once a week as the channel grows. Again, have a great one, guys, and uh, thanks for watching.